Anyway, we're here. <clears throat> we are. Uh, hey guys, welcome to the Nerdy Gritty, where we delve deep into the details of pop culture. I'm Fox. I'm Dez. And uh, we're going to talk about some interesting things today. Some right. I'm pretty excited. relevant stuff. Yeah. Uh, but of course, first, uh, I've had a lot going on recently in various yeah. things. I'm gonna t- I'm gonna ask you though. What you been up to? I've had a lot less going on in various things. Yeah, uh, you have children. Well, mostly because uh, well, actually, I guess not less as much as uh, my stuff is just very different. Um, I am uh, going to be DMing our next D and D campaign, nice. and I'm really excited for that. Nice. So, uh, it's going to be starting this coming Friday. Uh, so when you hear this uh, in five days, and um, it's like, so we have the benefit of having a. A group that is able to consistently play every Friday night at 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. Sure. Every single week. That, that's very nice. It's so nice. And uh, so this one is probably going to be, I'm guessing, about a year to two years in that oh. area. Yeah. So our first our first DM, it was one campaign that was four years. This last one was a year and a half. Uh, and I'm looking for around that same time. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's pretty cool. It's very cool. Uh, but other than that, I've been playing a lot of uh, Dragon Ball Fighters and. Right. Uh, that game is, I love the nostalgia of it, and I love just, I mean, as a huge Dragon Ball Z fan, um, I'm very fat, and also I like Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. Uh, as a huge yeah. Dragon Ball Z fan, uh, I enjoy it, but I could see if you were not as massive of a Dragon Ball Z fan as I was, how it would be a really boring game. Yeah, I played the first hour of the story, and in that hour, in that hour of the story. At least half the battles I did were just filler fight a clone. Battles. Exactly, yeah. They don't even have like a because in most fighting games there's yeah. a storyline to every battle. They don't do that. There's yeah. probably a storyline to one out of every right seven. Right, battles. there are some you can just go to, and you're just gonna be you know who you're gonna fight. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be a clone of one of the guys. It's really gonna not gonna have any impact. It's because you gain stuff from it. You gain like right. currency. And there stuff. is a, an RPG They're not element pointless, in there, but they are filler. And so, in that sense, it's a really good anime-based game. <laughs> <laughs> they gain more power, but it's no story progression. It's, really it's just kind of some filler. At so some point, you anime. teach Piccolo to drive. <laughs> okay, I know that's like seen highly as like the clear filler episode, but yep. I love that episode. <laughs> Teaching Piccolo and Vegeta how to drive is so good. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. How about you, Fox? You've been up to a lot. Yeah, uh, I'm going to start with video games. All right. Uh, I got, well, Monster Hunter World. I got it yesterday, actually, and I've played a couple of the hunts. And I prepared myself by watching a lot of, like, beginner's tips kind of things, like how to to actually get into it really well, things you should know from the start if you've never really played Monster Hunter, which was me. I played Monster Hunter 3 on the 3DS, but the controls were stupid. Hmm. Like, bad. Yeah. And so I just never got into it. So I did that and prepared myself, and I am really enjoying it. It's basically like Dark Souls-ish, where where you have you want to have a very specific loadout. You want to prepare yourself well for who you're going to fight, and you're very uh, hesitant, I guess you were, or or very um, what's the word I'm looking for? Intentional. Intentional with what you're doing Uh, when you are fighting a giant monster and. You better know how your weapon works. Right. Because if you just start button mashing, even on like the second guy, I lost half my health before I realized I need to stop doing this and I need to actually like choose when I'm attacking, <laughs> what, watch what that enemy is doing, choose like because you can attack certain parts of the enemy and gain certain things. Like, and so I've done pretty well and it's actually really fun to just get into. There's basically what they call the loop of preparation hunt uh crafting where Mm. you prepare for this battle you get into it you hunt down the monster you get uh crafting stuff from that monster then you come out and you build armor and weapons and then you start it over again yeah and it's really fun so that's a good game uh shadow of the colossus also came out very recently yeah i already watched an entire play one of of the greatest games of all time in my opinion and i was shocked to see how good the remake looks it's it's the same game yeah but just nice looking well they rebuilt it from the ground up well sure but as far as the gameplay goes right it's the same thing yeah which is what i wanted because it's this because it's one of the greatest games of all time but it looks incredible yeah uh apparently there so apparently there are these 79 
coins. Somebody know, finally figured out what which they Which I know did. what they do now, yeah, which, oh, I don't care. Uh, but I've just been playing the game normally. Right. Like, going to, I've done the first seven uh, Colossi. Haven't found a single one. They're pretty well hidden, I guess. Yeah. Because I have not. I have them. not been looking for them. It's and it's a massive map. Yeah. I have not been looking for them, and I haven't found any. So I guess Crazy. they're out of the way. I mean, I I like that because it doesn't detract from the actual story. Right. Because I feel like Wander is not going to be collecting coins when he's Ooh. sacrificing his <laughs> life or sa- like basically going over to the dark side throughout the game to save his lost love. He doesn't care about coins. Um, anyway, so that's been really fun. There are also two Easter eggs in that. Uh, I one found, that references Ico. I found something. What was it? I got an achievement for it. There's like a jar in a cave or a box in a cave a or barrel? something. A barrel? With a g- oozing green it's, stuff? Yeah, it's all... That's a reference to, um... I have not played Ico. Last Guardian. I haven't played Last Guardian either. That's a reference to Last Guardian. Okay. And then there's a watermelon on the beach that's a reference uh, to, okay. uh, Ico. I just, I so. kind of randomly found that, that barrel because I was trying to find a, how to get to this certain Colossus. And I just went into that cave and yeah. I was like, oh, that's interesting. And then I got a, a, a trophy popped. Yep. And I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go now. This isn't where I'm supposed to be. So Monster Hunter, Shadow of the Colossus. What else Those are you have doing? been fun. Movie-wise, uh, I have been in, uh, intend- uh, I got the movie pass, which I don't think, I, I'm, I probably have talked about it on here a little bit. The movie pass where you pay I don't know if you have, 10 bucks a month ridiculous. for a movie ticket to basically any movie theater a day. One ticket a day. So if you pay 10 bucks a month, you can get thir- up to 31 movie tickets, which is literally a crazy deal. Insane. I don't understand how it works. I don't care, though, because <laughs> I'm just going to use it as long as much as I can before it inevitably tanks. Uh, but I've already seen four movies with it, uh, so I've already made my money back yeah. very quickly. Um, I've been seeing all of the... Uh, Best Picture nominated movies. Right, right. Um, I've seen all of them except for one now, it's which the is only called one you haven't Call seen. Me By Your Name. Okay. It's the one I'm least in, at least anticipating, but we're going to be discussing kind of... That stuff. That kind of stuff. We're not going to be discussing like Oscar wins and stuff, right. but that's going to be a discussion. So I want to see them, and I like films, so... Right. Uh, You're a bit uh, of a so, cinephile. So far, uh, I, think, I think Get Out should win. Do you? Yes. Hmm. Uh, because it was very good. It was very good. You Unique. didn't really s- expect what was going to happen, mm-hmm. so there was like some like tense thrills to it, and also it kind of spoke to modern uh, cultural stuff going on without being a movie that's that's like, hey, look at all these cultural things. Like right. it's not just trying to hit you overhead. It just very subtly, and sometimes not subtly. It's fine. Uh, talks about it. Well, the times that it's not subtle, it's not subtle on purpose. Right, Like, it it realizes it's not being subtle. Right. I mean, movies recognize sometimes if they're too subtle, sometimes you have to paint it in black and white. sure, sure. It did a very good job of walking the line between social commentary and enjoyable thriller. Yeah. And also kind of a comedy. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. A bunch of different things. It's a weird movie. But it does a great job of it. And it's unique. And that's why I think it should be best. I don't think it will win. A, because the Oscars don't typically pick weird stuff. Mm-hmm. They kind of pick, like, that's an, clearly an Oscar movie, you know. So, with that, I think The Darkest Hour will win. Uh, a, because it was very good. And B, because it's, like, a classic Oscar movie. Where yeah. it's, it's, you know, Winston Churchill and his, like, resilience and, and him leading Britain in the first month of his term as Prime Minister, you know, and making... Like, really good. I wish... Get Out would win, if not that, The Shape of Water, because it's weird and really good You mean well. Grinding Nemo? <laughs> yes. There is not a sex scene, but they talk about <laughs> a woman having sex with, with fish a man. weird fish man. With basically Abe Sapien from Hellboy. <laughs> the creature Which, of the Black Lagoon. But he doesn't talk. Uh, or Lady Bird should win, too. I like hmm. Lady Bird. Anyway, yeah, so I've been doing a lot of movies lately. I also saw Jumanji. Because I went to the wrong, I, I had the wrong time for the movie I wanted to see, so I saw Jumanji, and it was, eh, it wasn't terrible, it wasn't good, it wasn't really worth my time, but it wasn't like, oh, this is a, this is garbage. It so, wasn't you're gonna walk out of. No, it, I, I laughed three or four times. Yeah. So that's three or four times more than I expected to. So, so let me ask you this, yeah. and this is an honest question that will actually, oh, I've got uh, an honest question that'll actually carry us over to uh, our topic. Sure. 
do you think Get Out will have a better chance of winning because it is culturally about yes, black? One hundred percent. Um I think Moonlight did last year. I right. think it was more culturally relevant, and I think that's a huge part of what art should do right. is reflect society. And so for better or for worse, whatever your opinion, I do think that that will have an impact on a movie that wins. Winston Churchill isn't really relevant anymore, aside from themes like World War Two was so long ago, you mm-hmm. know, and that story's been told before, and we, we all know basically what happened. Uh, maybe not specifics of the story, but we know war, the the outcome of World War Two. Uh, <laughs> Wait, what happened? <laughs> no, sorry, I won't, I won't spoil it for you. It's an explosive ending. <laughs> Aww. too soon always too soon i really did not see that coming um okay <laughs> we need to stop yeah and frankly so... i'm tired of it <laughs> anyway I, I do really believe that get out has a better chance of winning uh because of the 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 african-american experience it depicts and yeah. just kind of the what it talks about both in the sense that uh people like that People yeah. who are voting for these things like to think that they're doing good by voting for like this cultural movie, and well, also because, because the whole it, it's... hashtag Oscar is so white thing. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Also because it's important. I, it I honestly think it is important to do that kind of stuff. I think Get Out is a more important movie than uh, Darkest Hour. Yeah. Or Lady Bird. I agree. Uh, so I would be. I think that's a great reason to vote for that kind of movie, as long as the movie is good. If a movie is crap but just talks about black people's struggles, right. I'm not trying to like, you know, take away from the struggles. I'm just saying the artistic quality of the of the movie should be inherent to winning a, a winning a, a, a prize. You know. Right. I'll say I watched Get Out, and there it was a real dumb and not in all seriousness, but a little bit serious, like two percent serious. There was a paranoid side of me that was like, "What are you white people doing over there?" <laughs> Wait. Was, in real life, you wipe, well, just like what? There's this idea, not not literally that they're gonna minor spoiler alert, plug yours if you haven't seen Get Out. Not that they're gonna hypnotize me and take over my brain. Yeah, uh, but more that like there's, I, I just immediately felt this, not just possibility because I've experienced it many times, but just cultural judgment. Sure, like this cultural like eyes on me, and I like, and th- that that's probably the best way to put it. Like just for watching the movie, even though it was just my wife and I in the room, right? I felt like eyes what are you on doing, me wife? yeah exactly like you're looking at me because i'm a mexican man mm. aren't you well, no so. what i think what, i mean we're talking about get out a lot right now but right uh what i think is kind of brilliant about it is that it wasn't them being racist right i mean technically they were but it was like we like black people and want to be <laughs> like all of the people there were like i wish i was you yeah <laughs> literally so and so like it kind of flipped the whole idea of racism on its head a little bit for this movie and just kind of oh, because that reflected it back. Like, most of the time, yeah, it talked about how these white people say these things that they don't mean as, like, negative or whatever. But they come across as just kind of, like, condescending. And it's really interesting. The inner city black culture has been, probably since the 90s, I would say, <laughs> cool. You know? Like, sure. Synonymous with cool. Ever since Dangerous Minds. I, I'd say that was probably a big one. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the one that comes to my mind. Yeah. I haven't really seen a lot of '90s movies about inner city. And things, I mean, it, I mean, uh, it, life. It wasn't just then. Obviously, this dates all the way back to like early America with jazz and yeah, I, swing dance and yeah, things like I that. I feel like but... with this conversation, we have to just be like, we know we don't know the full picture. Right. We're not talking about everything here. So uh, we're not. Here's our topic for today, then. Yes. And we want to have a disclaimer. We're going to introduce the topic, and then we're going to give a disclaimer, and yes. then we'll continue on. But um. The, the topic that we're talking about today is the movie Black Panther. Uh, as we are having this conversation, uh, it will be coming out in... This weekend. Four days? Yeah, Friday. Yeah, so... 16th. Well, Thursday at, Th- like... Okay, Thursday night. Yeah, sure. so it'll be, like, four days from when you're hearing this. They still announced that it's in theaters Friday the 16th, even though every movie comes out the night before. That's just because of regional things. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, um, so we're talking about Black Panther... And this whole thing that, something that, and I brought up the topic, you honestly, did. and when I watched the trailers, and we just watched a 10 minute, all the tra- trailers and all the movie clips, all the clips combined. that have come out. Right. And there is this, uh, this Wakandan culture of Africa 
and their proud tribal stance yeah. as well as their uh, futuristic high tech, yeah, high tech yeah. stuff. But it does seem like a lot of it is boiled down to inner city black culture. Think, things you would see in a 90s. Like, right. That's that's really the the heyday of those 90s like inner city movies. Things you would see in there, like like the uh, the the secret handshake, or not the secret handshake, but just but kind yeah, of like, like reading and very have, cool handshakes or, or whatever. Right, right. Hip hop music. Hip hop. Yeah, they're all driving on. real cool cars. Yeah, with, you so, know, stuff like rim, that. Or rims and things like that. Things that honest, like let's let's get into our disclaimer here. Okay. Uh, I don't know what you want to disclaim, but I'm going to disclaim that I am a white man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, I I do not i am not in any way an expert on intercultural relations or uh african-american history or culture at this point right. i'm not trying to claim that at any point i'm not really i don't really have a whole lot to say about i, I i'm gonna maybe take it in a, a few different directions mm-hmm. because there's things that i would probably be more interested in talking about but you I am 100% Mexican. That's true. And um, I have grown up in a culture that both is very familiar with the Mexican culture in in Arizona, but at the same time, there's a lot of judgment. I have faced all sorts of kinds of persecution. Yeah, Arizona is a weird like place. That. Yeah. Because it's like 90% Mexican. That's an exaggeration. But also 100% like red. Yeah. So, I mean, just little things you know like i've people have pulled over and asked me how much they charge to do lawn work how much i charge to do lawn work when i was mowing my own lawn i'm like i live here this is my house you know uh my friend was pulled over once because she was having a bad day and the cop pulled her over and asked her if i was beating her uh like this it just i'm laughing because of the ridiculousness of the situation yeah. not because of the the inherent racism <laughs> there, just so you know so like i i have experienced uh persecution and judgment and things like that because of my race sure. but i also readily 100 percent know that as a mexican man it is absolutely not the same as being an african-american yeah man. it's different cultures yeah. different different like uh yeah so that's what we want to talk about today just know that we are neither experts nor right and although each of us have our own life experiences they are not the life experiences not the of same. an inner city african-american person right so uh but that being said the reason i wanted to bring this up is because i had this thought process when i first saw the trailers i was thinking to myself if we are trying to depict a proud african country why are we boiling this down to what an inner city American black culture would look like? Right, right. And this came to the thought in the head when Fox and I were discussing it. How should a movie balance true, genuine yeah. cultural representation? Honest, honest cultural representation. With a target demographic. Yeah, with its marketing right. scheme. Because... Uh, people like to re- they like things that they recognize right both literally and like oh i've seen that in a movie before like i'll see jurassic park 17 i like tyrannosaurus rexes and also like that person looks like me right i'm represented in this movie i want to go see it which is great uh but yeah it's just kind of this weird tension that marvel is has between wanting to depict something that hasn't been a it hasn't been in any of their movies right um and be a character that has like cultural history has always been this african like uh royal right uh has always existed and but also they're not really i mean i'm sure they have african marketing but we in the united states like they're trying to market to toward united states right teenagers i mean more than that but just people who don't live in the culture that is depicted in the movie and so it seems a little bit reductive as you've said to kind of well i mean they're black people so they probably like hip-hop right right Right? yes uh, like like it just seems like what it feels like a little bit and and so so here's my issue and here's what, what kind of frustrated me about the whole thing is immediately there was a lot of people saying and this is very cool i will say like Oh, it's really awesome to see a strong black woman sure. represented in yeah. such a great way. Like, it looks and like most of the main cast are that women. are good guys yeah. are not men or white. And also, like, 
believably strong. Like none of them are like that seductive. I'm gonna lure you sure. into my wife. No, they just look that's, like warriors. That, that's that's at least not part of the trailers. Not to, exactly. We, yeah. we we can't. We haven't seen the movie. Yeah. Oh, that's the other disclaimer that we want to give. Yeah, we know is that the movie isn't out. This yet. Isn't out. We're based totally on trailers and clips that and we've movie seen clips, and right. all that kind of the marketing. So based on what we've seen, yeah, none of these female characters seem just like the temptress or you right. know the the whatever the so femme fatale there's like this this cultural I- idea and this is truth where that when you are raised in within a certain culture you will tend to liken toward the things of that culture so if you were raised in the inner city you will likely enjoy hip-hop and basketball right and things like that and that's the, just because that's the culture that, of that, that area. is yeah you like what you have been raised to right uh, raised in and so immediately i'm thinking to myself here are these people why don't why don't they like tribal music? Or maybe let's pretend that their culture obviously is much more than just, you know, a tribal thing. They're sure. Way advanced. Why don't they like country music? Why don't they like metal? Why don't they like... Why don't, like, why don't they like anything? Why is it immediately that they like hip-hop and driving cars with fancy rims? Uh, and that they... Well... Yeah, I mean... Okay, I'm trying to answer your question. Right. Which is difficult to do. But, like, for some things, I feel like it's pretty easy. Why don't they like country? Because country is a pretty American thing. Now, they could like it. Or jazz. Heavy or metal whatever. is a European American thing. Like, right. it's a pretty white person type thing. Uh, unless you're the band in Living Color. But, uh, or Living Color. <laughs> but, uh, it's a pretty. It's, you're a Caucasian type but thing. Africa, but... the continent's music is tribal. In fact, there's some really right. interesting music there. I have uh, my roommate. Uh, in fact, the last podcast, Dan, uh, he actually got his major in jazz with an emphasis in bass. Right. And he took a musical theory class and he came back and we and I, he and I talked one time about some African cultures that they, it's like math rock where it's different time <laughs> signatures, sure. but all the instruments are playing at the same time. And it sounds like chaos, but then just like when you're doing something's in three four and something's in four four, Eventually, once they hit that twelve, for just a little while everything flows together. back together, and then they separate again. We it sounds so look, cool. We can argue about the the, the relevancy of jazz or the the quality of jazz at any point because there's some good jazz, but a lot of it's just like okay, guys, I will cut you. <laughs> jazz is incredible, and I, I will, agree, but also I will stop. cut you. No, never stop with jazz. <laughs> I will stab you right now. I have a knife on my person. Look, people use time signatures for a reason, okay? <laughs> it's so that you sound good together and you're on the same beat. Do you like math rock? Sometimes. It's the same type of thing. I get, like, I don't really listen to it. Anyway, good. okay, so, why why wouldn't they, as an African culture, uh, they're in Africa, and I actually looked up, like, I, I did some research, where is where Wakanda, Wakanda is supposed to be? and it's... Sometimes it's kind of moved around Africa. Oh, sure. Sometimes it's in the southern part of Africa. Sometimes it's in the eastern part of Africa. It is always within a third world country area, though. Oh, it's, it's with, not yeah, it's South not Africa. South Africa. You know what or, I mean? Yeah. So it's been raised within this ideal that it's supposed to be a hidden country yes. that's in a third world country area. Why is everything that they do and they like? I, part of me is gonna like expecting for this movie to start and they're playing basketball, you know, as they're panning into Wakanda. Like, come on, guys. Here's here's one of my theory. Well, here's one of my possible explanations. It's a fictional place. That's my wife's. Who, I, who, my wife and I talked about this for a like, while. Like, a it's a it's. I mean, it uh, it's not like something they made up because I mean, it's not something that this movie made up to get around it because Wakanda's always been a fictional place, obviously. But it is a clever way for them to just be like, it doesn't exist. We can decide what the culture is. We all we want. We're making up a place, and then they involve African tribalism and stuff in in there. But they listen to hip hop here. Like, hip hop is common in non-third world countries mm-hmm. and a lot of, again the the, the heavy beats and the heavy rhythm sure. in hip-hop and r&b is derived from a tribal music style oh sure yeah and, it all comes from that and right. so what if it's sort of a a it's fictional and b it's this is clearly an advanced society. I'm not trying to say that if you listen to hip hop, you're more advanced as a person that like, I'm not saying you're smarter. Don't it's, it's just, there's actually studies that will say that's not true, but I won't, I look, I won't get into I look, that. I don't know this. This is the it's hardest not conversation. As much as time signature. This is the hardest conversation for me because I'm, 
always trying to say, I'm not sure. Maybe this is true. So, like, but maybe because it's such an advanced culture technologically, I'll say it that way. It's a technologically advanced culture. They made it more similar to other technologically advanced cultures like America, like European cities where they have people like you're you have similarities to those cities because that's kind of what you would expect in a place like that based on the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. That that would be my theory. Now, that's not really satisfactory to me because if they're supposed to be isolated from the rest of the world, then, you know, they're going to have people that know about it and go back and forth probably, but you're not going to have like, you know, Tupac's not going to, like, stop on a tour in Wakanda. And... <laughs> <laughs> like, he's not going to go there and be like, hey, this... so if they're supposed to be so isolated, then it really wouldn't make sense that this is a type of music that is listened to or, or, or commonly, you know, created there. I will say that their fashion is great. Sh- I love sure. it. it. It balances this modern tribal look to it yeah that's and what I, i'm really interested in is how they balance those two ideas and the fashion in it, i think does a great job sure. and it's unique the fashion that they're wearing is entirely you've never seen anything it's not like something it i would before. see in america right and but it's also modern and cool looking or whatever sure. like sure. it'd be super cool if they even like blended genres of music or did something to that nature like tried to tried to come in with some sort of unique style into this because hey wakanda they've been isolated this entire time they developed their own music they developed their own culture they developed their own sports they developed their own everything but i don't see that to me it really seems like they're just marketing and the wakandan culture is a marketing tool when they have this opportunity to to go really, like full on unique. yeah to represent a a, yeah. a culture to represent Completely i mean it's different. a continent and that's unfair to try and represent an entire continent right yeah it doesn't make any sense because it's a very diverse place but uh this is there's another marvel movie that we can bring up though where if you accurately represent it's not exactly the same but we can talk about thor and all norse mythology and also the fact that really the norse part of it has nothing to do with the movie right they briefly the, it it's it's in retrospect it's very weird to me that Thor was set in New Mexico. <laughs> Why was Thor set in New Mexico? That... Because that's where Natalie Portman lives. <laughs> I don't think that's true. I was about to call her Jane Goodall, but that's the that's Jane the chimpanzee Goodall. lady. Who, what's her name? <laughs> Jane Foster. Jane Foster. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There's the connection. I was like. What? What does that have to do with anything? Thor's like, why are we monkeying around? <laughs> Look, we all know that Natalie Portland lives on, on Naboo. Yeah. Um. <laughs> no, but why? It just didn't make sense. Like, in retrospect, this is kind of... A, I can't say it's a it's the same situation. Thor would ruin Anakin Skywalker. I just want to make sure. Maybe not Darth Vader, but Anakin Skywalker. Thor would win it. No, Thor would destroy both of them. I don't know about that. He, he is the god of thunder. He uh, would... He would destroy... He's Thor, God of Hammers, actually. <laughs> Are you the God of Hammers? Oh, <laughs> uh, such a good line. Uh, oh, uh, that Thor, was a good movie. God of anyway, yeah, so in good. the same vein, though, they take this very culturally significant thing. I mean, obviously, Norse mythology is not as relevant to our society as African culture. Right. Considering America is heavily... Like, it's... it's There's a large part, portion of our population is African-American and, like... We oh, have roots there, and not to mention our history as a nation yes. has a pretty heavy. Well, roots I mean, in... however, I mean, obviously, we also do have European it. roots, but but I mean, when we uh, kidnapped Africans and brought sure. them over, we did sure. bring their culture. We here. brought their culture with yeah. us. It so it's very strange to me that I mean, they're... I'm gonna play devil's advocate here. The devil is awesome. Yeah, he's pretty. <laughs> reminds me of that simpsons episode where homer's just like would you mind if i play devil's advocate and they're like of course and then he just cuts to him playing a video game called devil's advocate (laughs) at at the quickie mart and then he like just goes back and has nothing to say it's so good uh anyway why is this an issue when the fact that thor and his friends who are based on norse mythological gods 
is not as much of an issue. And this is and that's a great question and here's why because it's the exact opposite issue. What do you mean? With Thor, there is an established mythology, but if we're going to assume that it's real, we have to assume that it has nothing to do with Norway or you know the the, 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 the Netherlands yeah, the, has nothing to do with the Netherlands or Scandinavia. Scandinavia or anything like that. And therefore, if it actually has nothing to do with Scandinavia, they can be whatever race, size, culture, shape that they want to be. We mm. can make them look like whatever we want. That's true because they're not Scandinavian. They're Asgardian. Asgardian is a real place, and in the Marvel as Asgard, yeah, yeah, Asgard is a real place uh, in the Marvel universe, and therefore it doesn't have to look like that. Sure. We're on this side. We are taking. We're like, okay, we are saying that this is an African culture. So it's totally got to be like inner city America, right? Because that's what Africans are like. It's it that it's the exact opposite thing. It would be as if we did say, here's the Scandinavian thing. So it absolutely everybody has to be white, blonde hair, blue eyed, Aryan master race, right? But then we say, well, no, it doesn't have to be that because if Asgard's a real place, they can be whatever we want to look like. Just want this. Oh, so I just want to quickly the Aryan master race has nothing to do with Norse. Like, that's that's a. Yes, but, that's a different thought process. Well, Norse I'm just mythology, saying, sure, large I blonde hair, blue eyes. Yes, yes, they have those. Are yeah. Anyway, anyway, we're on this side. Not not. We should also be saying, if we're going to treat Wakanda like a real place, we should not boil it down to what we think its cultural essence should be. We should let its story grow its own culture. We should let what we've created here grow its own culture, and then make it represent that culture okay now here's one more thing i'm going to present to you as an idea and i want you to uh react to it uh black panther the mm -hmm. comic book character was created in reaction to the civil rights movement well i mean yeah the oh, black panther is the black yeah, panther exactly <laughs> based so based on that his origin as a comic book character is heavily american not that he was an american right but that it was born out of a american uh specifically american uh events um you know malcolm x and and, and just that right. whole right to vote and a separate but equal idea uh, how maybe that could be influencing their idea like black panther is a representation of this american rights movement and so if we were to make him purely afro or make the culture purely african and like everything about it purely african then it maybe it's not accurately representing the character that's been created and that we're putting on screen i cannot speak and we've mentioned this before i cannot speak for african sure here's what i can speak for if they made the movie coco have you seen coco yet i have not i i really want very to. very good i've got this, a movie pass i can yeah, see go it see whenever it. i want uh, for free this now. this this kid wants to uh, be a musician but his family hates music like sure. it's just a cult like a like a familial thing that they hate music and uh, yeah, who does but he wants to be a, a mariachi uh right. musician I, I think i know the general premise. yeah he wants yeah. to be a mariachi musician yeah if they had made coco and say it's based in mexico uh, we're going to create a fictional town in Mexico, in we'll say central Mexico, and we're going to have this kid want to be a musician. And we all know that Mexicans like rap, and Mexicans want to drive um, Impalas with uh, with uh, uh, <laughs> with with, uh, with uh, what do you call it? Hitting the bounce, switches, yeah. They bounce up the, and down. I don't know what you call it. Shots Hydro or whatever. Hydraulics. hydraulics, yeah, with the hydraulics, and they all like the Oakland Raiders. So <laughs> that that's this, this kid's goal. Yeah, what's the problem? Yeah, this kid's goal is to make rap music and drive an Impala with hydraulics because he lives in central Mexico. That's what he wants to do. Yeah, because that's Mexican culture, right? And I would and I would say like, okay, sure, that's inner city mexican culture you know if, if you're born in tucson like me you see a lot of mexicans in tucson with that kind of culture yes that's true but when i have been into mexico and when i go to mexico the culture is nothing like that right mexico has has its own culture and its own thing and mariachi music is not the only thing of course there is still mexican rap and mexican pop oh, sure. music and mexican everything but mariachi music is the culture of 
Mexico, you know, Mexico. Yeah, and, it's a pretty pretty iconic yeah, representation. And there are so many other, and I think Coco did so well with that. Sure. They took the Mexican culture in Dia de los Muertos and they represented it because they said, here we have this fictional town that we have, but we want it to represent the culture that it's set in. Yeah, yeah. And as a Mexican, as a 100% Mexican <clears throat> person, I loved and appreciated that my daughter came home she's obviously half mexican my daughter came home and she wanted to learn more about that and i yeah. taught her spanish words and she sings songs in spanish now from the movie coco that's awesome and it's super cool and i don't feel like black panther is doing the same thing hmm. okay so you're saying it sounds like there's there's basically two cultures at uh, clashing here mm -hmm. uh they're trying to equate african culture which is a very general statement. Yes. With, it's, it, I mean, here's the thing. African-American culture is not African culture. Right. It's American culture. It is a specific genre of it, but it is not, they are basically two separate entities. Right. So, how would, I don't blame Marvel. That's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to get here. That's the tough part. I don't, I, I am not a marketing guy. Well, I don't know how they like. Let's move the, on to the, okay. Let's move on to the next section of sure. our topic here. Then is how do we think they should do this? Because I I agree with you. I don't blame them because at the end of the day they're still a business entity, and they want to market. Right, and they're not doing. It. I don't think they're doing anything heinous. No, I I, I agree with you. If anything, they might be a little ignorant, which is not great. <laughs> but <laughs> they're not malicious. I would right. say. Would... And nor do I think anybody should be offended. You know, my example with Coco, I would be offended if that were the case. But oh, sure. that was a, an exaggeration. Sure. You know, it, it, Black Panther is super cool and he's awesome and it looks great. And if there was a Mexican like that and he was super cool and awesome, I would be like, yeah, man, right, that's right. rad. You I'm know? going to play. I, I've got one more idea to hit you with. Okay. What if this is what's needed? How so? Movies like this. While they are, you know, they play a role of, hey, this is a cool movie. Come watch it. But also, hey, this is a movie that's specifically representing non-white people. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of that, especially in Marvel. Mm -hmm. Marvel, if you if you are African American, you're the sidekick of the white guy. Literally, everybody who is a superhero in Marvel, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, if you're black, you're the sidekick to the white guy. You oh think gosh, about that. That's true. <laughs> Falcon, War Machine. <laughs> uh, and that's it. End of list. <laughs> <laughs> if you're one of those guys, Heimdall. <laughs> there we go. Okay, Heimdall's role in the third one actually was, yeah. was not sidekick. He was awesome. Also, if I had to choose between Idris Elba and Chris Hemsworth, mm. I'd choose Idris Elba. Idris Elba. I He's really wish. I really man. wish he was the new James Bond. Oh, but Daniel Craig is playing James, James Bond, Bond again. Again, which is fine. He's a good James Bond. I but don't like it. Him. Oh, okay. James Bond, but. but Idris Elba. I like the movies he's in as a, or as James Bond. I guess maybe not him specifically as James Bond. There's anyway. a gif of Idris Elba in the office, oh, yeah. and he's just saying to the camera, "I'm aware of the effect I have on women." <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, because a couple of the women in the office just all of a sudden like want him <laughs> for like <laughs> just immediately, and it's so funny. Anyway. Uh, where was I going with this? Oh, what if this How is... How delicious Idris Elba is. <laughs> what if this what's nece This is what's necessary? They are trying to... If, if they want to market this movie, showing people, hey, young people, you now have a hero to look up to, if that's what they want to say. There's other heroes they can look up to. There's, you know, whatever. But if we're saying... But young people aren't necessarily, especially inner city people, I'm being very general here. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe not true. I, I would say that they're not super interested in African culture. Right. And so maybe it's kind of the, well, we kind of have to. to it's the an end justifies the means. We want to get to a point where this culture we want to reach should see this movie and be able to be inspired by it and how like little girls can be inspired by these strong women mm. who are strong not just because they can like fight people mm -hmm. but they are just people who they they are not dependent on men or they are not the sidekicks or they are not just your like pepper pots Pepper pots is great but she's <laughs> just basically just like the assistant well she's ceo i guess but anyway yeah. 
Like, so if we want these little girls to come see, want to be excited to see this movie, then maybe we need to put things in this trailer that they are interested in, aside from just seeing black people. Yeah, I mean, and and again, for all we know, the movie could oh do. I really great. hope there's zero hip hop in that movie. Yeah, like, or maybe <coughs> the the the. <clears throat> intro credits and the end credits or something like sure, that. You sure, sure. Something. I mean, it's like I think I hope it's the opposite of a. Uh, I don't know if you saw Moonlight. Mm-hmm. Moonlight was a great, great movie. Um, but it is a movie set in Miami, um, like the a terrible parts of Miami, like drug dealers so most and all of that Miami. stuff. <laughs> uh, well, the parts that haven't been destroyed by hurricanes. Um, but there is zero. Unless it's somebody listening to it on the radio or something, hip hop in the soundtrack, hmm. in a movie that would you expect it, and it wouldn't be out of place. It is purely orchestral, and it kind of changes what the movie feels like. And so I hope that they kind of do that for this, because what you expect based on the trailers and the marketing and stuff is hip hop soundtrack and whatever and i really hope that that's just a marketing tool right i hope it's just a way to get you into the theater if you're not super interested in black panther like as a superhero or comic books or whatever but representation and seeing somebody who looks like you on screen then get there and realize this is more like oh okay you don't even realize that there wasn't any hip-hop like i hope that that's what they're doing that i think that is would be a, a benefit to the movie right I'm not saying they shouldn't put hip hop in it. That that'd be fine. Yeah. I'm just saying I think it would be unexpected and maybe a, a benefit to the movie to not have that. I, and that would be very cool if it was all just a, a marketing uh, piece on the trailers and whatnot. Sure. Um, or even you know you mentioned this is a fair point. Trying to draw people in slowly yeah. and saying like, okay, Black Panther Part One is going to be super you know demographic inner city uh, black culture. Right. But part two, now that you're really interested in the superhero and you want to come see the movie again, let's start drawing this back into maybe we go instead of Black Panther coming to America, maybe people come into Wakanda and we see a lot more of what the African culture looks like in inside Wakanda or whatever, you know. And so they, they, they slowly introduce a more rich African, actually African okay, culture over me the think course about of this. a few movies, you know what I mean? I think it'd be really cool if like the Avengers go to Wakanda. Yeah. Like, but... And, and uh, you know, what's their names? Don Cheadle's uh, War Machine, whatever his yeah. name is. And, uh, and uh, Falcon, Sam Wilson, they go and they even feel out of place. Yeah. Not just Tony Stark because he's white man, extraordinary, but even those people who look similar are just like, this is, this is not... Yeah, like, just, just, just because to, their color of skin matches right, that our makes culture no is different. Yeah, worlds like, apart. Yeah, and so it'd be kind of cool to have that. Also, just in theory, I don't think they're going to go to America in this movie. I think Where are they? In Wakanda. No, they show them driving cars over bridges and in cities and... Yes, have you, that's Wakanda. No. That is the futuristic city in Wakanda. Wakanda looks like, you know, Buck Rogers in the 21st and a half century or whatever it is. Yes. It, 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 looks, it looks more From futuristic the outside, than what you're seeing. But maybe down on the street level, it looks like that. They also show like like crazy glowing bullet trains and stuff, and that's I not think, America. I think the ending battle is going to be in Wakanda. The battle between Golden Jaguar I hope it's enti- and Black Panther. I hope it's entirely in Wakanda. I think the majority of it's going to be, be maybe not in be, America. That'd be but real annoying if they just like we're Wakandans and then they go to London and fight each other or some crap like that. Because, I think that's what it's going to be. Oh, that'd be real disappointing. Like that. Okay, you know there's a water crisis in Africa, right? How many bridges over massive rivers do you think there are in I don't like, know. Eastern Africa? Zero. I don't know. Look, Zero is the answer to that I question. I just feel like the only character that I've seen in the marketing for this movie that isn't Wakandan is uh, Bilbo. Like, there's nobody in, in the movie. <laughs> Bilbo yeah, one, and Gollum. One of those the Tolkien, the, the white, Tolkien white characters. <laughs> uh, and so it just doesn't seem like there's any reason to leave. This is a fight between the king of Wakanda and clearly some sort of rebel upstart guy who's got problems with the king of Wakanda. 
I, my Why guess, would they I honestly they're gonna fight know. each other in Wakanda. I honestly don't know, but my guess is that it's like a uh, a bastard son that's yeah. older than him, but not not Whatever. actually heir to the throne. I don't know. Yeah, that that'd be a real detriment if they just like, well, let's go fight in Los Angeles. I think again that's hey, part of my look, annoyance okay. in this. I think that anyway, we'll see. So, we'll see. But here's another counsel that I'll give. Uh, another great movie. Another Disney movie. Um, you and your Disney. Moana. Moana did a fantastic job depicting strong characters, yeah. confident characters, strong female characters. My son came home and he's like, I want to be Moana. And I'm like, that's awesome, dude. That's super cool. Like, sure. because she's rad. She's and I really, person. yeah. And it has nothing to do with Hawaii. Yes, Hawaii has Polynesian culture in it. Sure. But this movie represented Polynesian culture. Yeah, not Hawaii. Not Hawaii, right. Yeah. And again, I, I feel like Black Panther could do that it could represent african culture and still draw in the african-american demographic i'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt and say that they will yeah yeah i think uh the bar i don't i don't think they will play this lightly they know that the the expectations are high yes for a movie that rep they've literally started hashtags like what black panther means to me or something something similar to that like mm-hmm. They know that this is something different than what have they what they've done before. Yes, and so I strongly believe that it's going to be maybe not a hundred percent African in nature, but definitely not what you would see in Iron Man or right. Captain America or something like that. So I, I'm looking forward to the movie, of course. Oh, I am, and the movie looks great. Looks a lot of fun. Yeah, I have nothing sure. against the movie, um, and I. I I hope you're right. I want this to be a really cool representation of African culture. Yeah. Uh, and of course, at the end of the day, my wife brought up this point. And she's like, "Is this a fictional place?" And I'm like, "Yeah." She's like, "They can make it whatever they want." Right. Then. Right. Right. There's they have thing. they have 100 percent creative control. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I can only complain so much because they can just say, "Oh, Wakanda uh, actually like. helped establish hip hop in America." Yep. Yeah. There you go. Yep. Take that. And so That's now there's a re- yeah. So <laughs> they also, can say whatever they want. Also, I mean, this is a whole other topic. It's a movie. This yeah. is an alternate universe. There you go. Done. Yeah. <laughs> like, we know, it doesn't matter what you say now. It's Earth 616 instead of Earth Prime or whatever, you know. So, I, I mean, it can only bother somebody so much. But yeah. at the end of the day, uh, I'm excited for the movie. I think you guys should go see it. Um, let us know what you guys think. Sure. Uh, what do you think about cultural representation in movies? how it's done well, how it's done poorly, and specifically, how do you think it's been done in Black Panther, at least via the trailers and clips that we have seen up to this point? Yeah. I, for one, am excited for Captain Marvel when we finally have another white person. Dwayne Johnson isn't white. He's Polynesian. What? Oh, Captain I'm, Marvel. I'm talking Captain the, Marvel, not Shazam. Uh, the girl, yeah. yeah. That's right. They the have real to Captain Shazam Marvel. Because Marvel, the, the comic company, actually sued DC. Yep. Like, Captain Marvel has been around for, like, 40 or 50 years, and finally Marvel Comics comes in, and they're like, hey, can we have that back? It's like when when the WW, and the World Wildlife Foundation, <laughs> sued the, the World, World Wrestling Federation. It's like, nobody was confusing you. <laughs> Although, like, Panda's wrestling would be pretty sweet. <laughs> you know, like, animals hitting each other with folding chairs and stuff. That'd be amazing. <laughs> All right. Well, yep. That that's that's our that's what we got. Uh, so yeah, let us know uh, what you think about this idea. Let us know what you think about pandas <clears throat> hitting each other with folding chairs. That's really what we wanted to get to. Yeah, black and white, all coming <laughs> Mixed together, together for the idea with a folding of chair. violence. <laughs> uh, black and white coming together in the perfect harmony of a DDT. Yeah, uh, of th- the, th- the Stone Cold Stunner. <laughs> I think that's what that movie or that song by Michael Jackson was about. Yeah. Ebony. No, that's not Michael that's Jackson. Not, no, I'm talking no, about No, Black and White. Yeah, Ebony and, and Ivory White. is um I have no idea. Is uh, I think it's Stevie Wonder and John Lennon. Sure. Is, is I can't remember. Yep, those guys. I yeah. mean, obviously I know who they are. Just whatever. You of all people I figured would know anyway. John Lennon? You mean I don't know. No. Nothing nope. else. Mm-mm. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for your support. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll see you next week. Yeah, and uh, we'll be talking about more stuff than <laughs> I don't remember what it is. Me neither. What is it? Uh, I can look it up real quick. Let's look at our preview of next week. Steve yeah. or Des, give him some random trivia while I look it up. Uh, did you guys know that hippo milk is pink because of an enzyme that uh, was within the mothers and so it comes out pink? 
Did Keep you going. also know that I went to the wrong place? Jersey cow milk is a brownish color because Jersey cows have a little bit of uh, blood inside of their milk, and because Jersey is just a gross, it's place. a garbage place. Uh, did you guys know that Fox's beard is actually uh, its own country? Made of Jersey milk? Made of Jersey milk. Uh, Speaking of which, did you guys know that the Vatican is its own country? Yeah, I did know that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I really want to visit that someday. Anyway, I got the topic now. Uh, the title, the tentative title, is called Grandpa Simulator 2018. Yes! Oh, this is, is going to be a good topic. So basically, very quickly here, Des and I have noticed that there's like this interesting concept of like uh fatherhood fatherhood showing up in games yep and some other ideas about growing up and just kind of like what it's like to live life now and just kind of maturity right um and we think it's a, a obviously a depiction or a, a reflection of the development community growing up like we got well as old, well as the target demographic and the demographic the like late the people, 20s yeah early basically 30s. the whole industry is getting older yeah both audience and development and so we're going to talk about how that looks, uh, what's that going to look like in the future? Are we going to get Grandpa Simulator? Because yeah. I play that game. I, I mean, I'm I don't need to play that game. game. I'm, I simulate that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> get off of my lawn! <laughs> I'd play, yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, look for that next week. Uh, but until then, we'll see you guys later. Remember, save games, go. save lives. That's what I was waiting for. Bye. Bye.